we're going to have uh, speakers, great sessions, and we already have the first one uh, that I'm going to greet. Uh, Johnny, hello. How are you? How are you hello. today? Good. How are you? I'm very good. Before you start, I have a very important question to ask. So uh, you're a general manager of Dark Horse Games. As that, is that right? Okay, why correct. why is it Dark Horse and not Dark Pony Games? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a that's a unique question. Um, <laughs> well, Dark Horse Dark Horse Comics has been around since 1986, I believe, and so I, I think it fits with our general ethos. You know, we're we're the third largest comic book publisher behind Disney and Marvel, you know, so we're kind of the dark horse in the race. Um, I don't know why it was originally named Dark Horse, what our founder uh, was thinking back in 1986, Mike Richardson, uh, but, you know, we are, we are dark horse. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. And, uh, well, I hope that uh, you have a great presentation uh, for us. So it's over to you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you to WN for having me. Uh, we will be discussing today uh, intellectual property and games, and we'll give a little color on what, uh, towards the end, what Dark Horse Comics, Dark Horse Media, and Dark Horse Games are, uh, is and is doing in this space. Sorry. So the general agenda, we'll go over the importance and growing importance of IPs and entertainment and gaming, what multimedia and transmedia content is, and IPs and the importance of it in the games industry, some case studies, and then of course, just a quick snapshot on who we are. Um, IP is as important as ever, right? It's incredibly difficult to create uh, content that resonates with audiences, no matter the platform, right? We're, we're all gamers here. And even for, for gaming first IPs, it's very, very difficult, right? To, to resonate with um, the players and, and fans at home. So having good IP is eventually king. So content is king and consumers crave familiar stories, right? This, this actually bleeds into why IP is very important in games because brand recognition and so forth, it's a, it's a self-virtuous enforcing cycle. And we've all experienced where, you know, we're fans of a brand slash IP and then we all of a sudden become price agnostic, right? We will pay pretty much any price for, to be part of that universe, to maybe even have a collectible in our, in our homes. And then in the right is just a snapshot of 2020 of the um, IP based content in each um, revenue channel or multimedia platform. And you'll notice here that one Umbrella Academy, which is one of our projects is listed on and it, that season two was number one in maybe 50 countries for several months. But you'll notice here that the far majority of uh, IPs here are multimedia projects. And we'll go into what that currently is. So multimedia content creation has been around for some time, right? What the, the graphic that you see on the right is Walt Disney, uh, like Disney flywheel uh, that he created in 1957. Right, so you can see the importance of that. What's in the middle is not actually like intellectual property, but it says theatrical films, right? And Disney has kept that specialization throughout, throughout its history. Um, a lot of this uh, content was, I got a shout out to, to Matthew Ball, who writes a wonderful blog on, um, he's a VC who writes a blog on tech, entertainment, and games overall. Uh, I would encourage anyone and everyone to read his blog. Um, one thing he won, he wrote one recently, what is an entertainment company in 2021 and why does the answer matter? And two takeaways that are relevant to this audience is one, an entertainment company does three things, create and tell stories, build love for those stories and monetize that love. One thing you will also notice, and I alluded to earlier, is that market leaders tend to be specialized, right? That includes games and that also even includes Disney. Right. So Disney's game strategy, which is not their necessarily their specialization, is focused on licensing. Right. So because that's not their area of expertise, their their area of expertise can, has continued not too far away from this original flywheel that uh, was created by Walt Disney in 1957. Right. They're the far and away leader in film and TV and, of course, uh, location based entertainment. 
The next evolution from multimedia, multimedia is telling the core uh, similar story in multiple mediums, right? Bringing that core similar story to TV, to movies, to music, right? Uh, we saw that recently with taking The Witcher story, uh, which was a beloved book, then game, then to um, an awesome Netflix series, right? Um, transmedia, which is where we see the industry moving to, is telling a unified story world across multiple mediums. So branches of stories, extensions of stories, deep dives into key characters or backstories and so forth. We've seen that with um, Star Wars recently, and they've done that really, really well. And I would say they're the innovative kind of leader in this space. So th that's the difference between multimedia and transmedia, where I think at the beginning stages of seeing more and more transmedia and seeing the power of it. Um, and this is just, you know, you see a graphic of some of our IPs, some of which we uh, published on the comic book side, some of which we've created media and entertainment properties with, and we're hopefully bringing into the games ind industry through licensing partnerships. But transmedia, the, it really is a way to create your intellectual property into a brand, and a brand uh, drives love and drives monetization as well. Now, for this audience, does intellectual property matter in gaming, right? Um, why, why is it important? I think one really easy reason to understand why it's important is, frankly, it helps with difficult game launches, right? Game launches, paid UA, marketing, is very, it's a red ocean right now in all platforms, PC console, mobile, cloud, and even AR, VR, right? And, and having branded IP, um, one helps with your launch, but also helps with your user acquisition, will probably help your CPIs um, and, and LTVs, right, going forward. And um, among the top 100 highest earning mobile games in 2020, 19 were licensed to IP games. And we expect that trend to be uh, to continue to increase. So this is some data behind it. Um, this is mostly in mobile. I, I expect this number to be a little bit higher in PC console, right? Where gamers expect more of an immersive experience than you we typically have on your currently on your mobile phone. So not significantly, significantly higher, but a little bit higher on PC console. As you can see, um, 2020 was a little bit of an, an, an anomaly, but in 2021 and 2022, I expect that percentage to go from 23% to maybe even 25, 28, and, and so on and so forth. IP will be increasingly important. One, because it helps solve the problem with games, game launches, two, paid UA, and three, really, it's the creating... Um, you know, love for the franchise, extending stories and, and bringing your fan into that, you know, price agnostic self-virtuous cycle that I mentioned on that, on uh, slide one. So this on, out of the 23% of, of games um, that were IP based, this is the breakdown that you see on the right, geolocation AR is 99.9% .9 uh, IP based. Uh, we can all kind of figure out who that is with Pokemon in the space, with um, Harry Potter in the space, right, and 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 so forth. So we see, we expect all these genres to tick up, especially the hyper casual one that's near zero. We we expect hyper casual, and I've seen it in all of, in our discussion and in the industry that hyper casual games will also um, lean into IPs heavily because, the, as we all know, hyper casual space is pretty red ocean with paid UA and it's a paid UA LTV game there and utilizing IPs can give the developer and the game um, unique competitive advantages. Case, some case studies to go into. So, you know, Star Wars and, and Disney, as I mentioned, is basically the gold standard of transmedia. They've done a great job, even with games, specifically in games with um, The Force Unleashed, Fallen Order, Order and Knights of the Old Republic, all um, building bridges and branches of their IP and telling unique stories uh, that stay with the same core ethos, um, but really give fans a new experience. Uh, Pokemon, it, 
in its creation and its foundation is a transmedia property. So you see that um, brand and IP go very easily into many, many uh, forms of media, games, anime series, movies, and, and, and so forth. And Lego is a pretty unique one, but as we know, Lego has become a true brand um, and creating the Lego universe around games and movies and so forth has really um, ticked up that IP's importance driven revenue. And uh, we continue, we expect that to really continue. So those, these three IPs and brands have been really innovating in the space and we feel the rest of the industry will, will follow. A case study, as I mentioned, Star Wars, right? Um, this is, uh, you know, the Legends canon on the left, Disney has continued it and where it's tagged with the letter, the letter G is the game projects that they've licensed um, out but they were really well done as extensions of the story and the core IP. This is a snapshot of Dark Horse Media and Dark Horse Comics uh, IP portfolio. We have over 425 in our IP portfolio growing, expected to grow to about a thousand in uh, the next five years. You see, we, we're generally focused on you know, expanding genres, age groups and cultures. We are the one of the top manga publishers in the West. Um, I'm a big fan of manga, and I think manga is also um, a genre of IP that will be very, very important in games, especially even in the West as we go forward in the industry. Um, some of our specific uh, projects to talk about is Umbrella, Umbrella Academy, some of which you may know. Um, you know, it was a comic book. First, it was uh, by Jared Way and Gabriel Ba, and in 2019, uh, the season one Netflix series came out to critical acclaim and uh, a lot of viewership. Season two last year went beyond even our expectations and was uh, number one in almost 50 countries for several months in 2020. Season three is coming, and also so is the fourth series um, in the graphic novel. We have licensed um, a mobile game to a top mobile game developer. And so that mobile game will be coming out hopefully sometime next year. And also we um, hope to do some pretty cool in-game collaborations with um, several of the top live games as a service titles that are out there right now. As you know, some of you may know, Umbrella Academy has a wealth of characters, has um, you know superpowers and um, and, and, and some, you know, they, they time travel and some are kids and some are, are, are adults and they're multiverse versions. So it's, it's a um, unique IP, but also fits well into all sorts of games and, and in-game collaborations. So we hope to do pretty cool stuff with that. Another one to highlight that many people might know is The Mask. Um, this was a comic book as well. And um, it, it became most famous back in the 90s with Jim Carrey's movie, which I loved and continue to be a bad, big fan of. Um, th this, I hope to find um, a right game developer partner for to bring this uh, wonderful IP and experience into the games industry. Uh, and Project Black Sky um, was a long um, developed superhero universe by Dark Horse Comics and our found founder, Mike Richardson. Uh, it has a wealth of characters that has done crossovers with Justice League. And we, ex uh, we hope to do transmedia um, projects, both in, in entertainment and games industry um, and projects going forward soon. Um, that's kind of it. And I, I guess I could open up the questions if there are any. Thank you very much, Johnny. Uh, that was a great presentation. Um, uh, how um, how are you looking for developers? Maybe um, which of your IPs are focused on looking for other developers to work with? The far majority of them, we are looking at a partnership licensing opportunity, right? The we have an incredible Dark Horse Entertainment division that has many shows and movies in production, and of course, those IPs are going to be of significant importance in the next year, two, three years. 
And so we can focus on those with game developers and potentially even help them time launches so there's synergies, right? Um, and then the second layer would be certain IPs I really believe should be on certain platforms. Like um, certain IPs deserve, in my opinion, a PC console, AAA, really immersive, open world, somewhat hyper-realistic experience, and some can be um, pretty casual, right? Um, and as, as you saw on the slide earlier, we, we really do cross genres and diversity and age groups of, of um, IP and, and comic books. So um, that's generally where our, we, we use as guidelines to talk to people about specific IPs. And then we also wanna to listen to the developers. And we, we, I've been in the games industry for a long time now and the media entertainment industry as a whole for over 15 years. And, and so we get we have a pretty good sense of what at least the um, mid tier and top tier developers uh, are good at, right? And, and then we wanna listen to them what their creative vision is and, and then give them feedback from us like what IP could fit there. We are not trying to say here developer create this IP game and then, but we, we have to really align on technical vision uh, creative vision um, and, and really work together with our partners. Okay, thanks. Uh, just, uh, you know, just a question, more of, you know, a broader question, maybe. Uh, in your opinion, um, let's say we're speaking about uh, mid-tier developers uh, and they are choosing which project to start working on next. Um, in your opinion, what's easier to start like a brand new project or partner with someone and work with some IP? In terms of development process maybe well this is where um comic books are awesome for game developers <laughs> to to license because there's a wealth of content right depending on the ip there's a lot of issues there's a lot of stories a lot of angles that a a studio can take and um so that's why you most of the time you will see uh game developers and studios license from the comic book IP holder. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I I, th I think I agree, and uh, I think that among game developers, there are so many uh, comics fans. I would say, <laughs> and uh, you have to love what you work on. Uh, thank you so much for coming and for opening uh, our online conference today. And uh, we hope to see you on the Dublin Hub as well. Uh, if some people have questions. Yeah, I will um, head over there now. And if anyone has questions, I'll be happy to answer it over there. Sure. Uh, have a nice day and uh, thank you.